welcome to the Popcorn Junkies and we have a very rare guest on the Popcorn Junkies. Somewhere over the rainbow. No, not Judy. Nadia. Somewhere far there's a place once in a lullaby. Your hair's looking wild oh, tonight, God. isn't it? Is your yeah, full sorry. head in a shot? Yeah, it's it's had it had a lot of treatment this okay. week because I did photo shoots and it's so dry and I oh. can't wash it because I've had a patch test, so sorry, I've just looked shit. There's been two films released this weekend, both of which in their own ways are horror stories. Uh, one so fictional it couldn't be more fictional in The Joker and one so real life, sadly, it couldn't be more real life, it beggars belief. And the Joker has had such a massive effect on this family. Oh yeah. That the, I think it must break all records for a review. It's something like 48 minutes, the Joker review. Yeah, yeah, it's a very so long review. So check it out on the yeah. playlist. Uh, the kids got Head very, over. very fired up about yeah. it. And it's a great <laughs> review. So here's the thing, we're gonna review Judy, which is the new film starring Rennie Zellweger. We've just come out of the cinema. Um, it's directed by Rupert Gould. It's based on End of the Rainbow, the play, yeah. stage play that we saw starring Tracy Bennett. Bennett. Is that right? We Would saw you... it in New York. We saw it in New York. And it was a phenomenal stage show, phenomenal. wasn't it? And she was phenomenal. I, I think, think she won a I Tony think she did. For I think she did win, win something. Okay, so I have to confess, I went into this film. Not, I'm not an enormous Judy Garland fan, or I wasn't a Judy Garland fan. Um, and so I've got a little bit world weary of biopics in general. So, and the trailer, I think we were all a little bit sort of, hmm, meh, it's a bit of a meh trailer. I didn't like the trailer at all. And no. then I asked a friend of mine yesterday at work um, whether he'd liked it. And he said, well, yeah, I did, but it wasn't, it wasn't what I expected. No. And he said, I think I just built it up too much. Yeah. And he said, what are you expecting? I said, nothing. He said, oh, you'll probably love it then. So I went in expecting very little. We took my parents. My mum was very blur about it as yeah. well. Like, oh, Nanny Di was see. very like, oh, she was Nanny Di can be, well, like, yeah. I'm here, so I'll have a look. So that's how we all went into the cinema. And very slowly we went into the cinema too. There were about five different crutches that various yeah. grandparents were using. Yeah. So then we only had and about- And they were all trying to make out the other one was more disabled. The other, yeah. does, does so-and-so need the lift? Does such and such I know. need the disabled toilet? I noticed no, that. I'll take the stairs and let her have the lift. It was yeah. quite hilarious. There were only three fully functioning knees between yeah. all of us. So Judy wasn't necessarily a big sell to me on this. What was your take on Rennie Zellweger before you went into this? I, I, well, you know, you know, I mean, Bridget I Jones. hate the Bridget Jones so films. Do I. There's always been a fragility to her mm. that interests me, but not enough that I would have remembered it. But I no. remembered it as I watched this film. That, yeah, that yeah, there yeah. is that thing about her that's something yeah. very. But the casting of her wasn't necessarily a. I have to go and see it. Well, I remember we got sent by the PR people the first one of image. the first photos. Yeah. I remember being excited about that. But then I saw the trailer and it felt a bit, you know, a bit more weary after Bohemian Rhapsody and everything. I just yes. thought, is this going to be like, have that real sort of like, yeah. almost cartoony yes. approach? Well, I mean, the weird thing is I have sort of, I mean, my experience of Judy Garland uh, was always the one that I had with my nan. I was watching Mickey Rooney films, Meet Me in St. Louis or whatever it was. And they're always putting on a show in a barn, weren't they? And uh, there are lots of black and white films. And of, obviously the most emblematic one is, is The Wizard of Oz. Now, The Wizard of Oz held Which a... Which I always hated. Now, yeah, this is... Dreaded this, The yes, Wizard of Oz. Yeah, this is a Dread, real contrast. I, it's a real... I know that's going to offend a lot of people because most of the world loves The Wizard of Oz. Well, it's one of those... It used those... to piss me off. Well, yeah, which I find... I hate I, The Witch. I, kind I hated of... it when it was black and white. Right, I kind of like that about you though, because you buck the trend with everyone on that and you're the only person I know who does, because I'm a sucker for it, because for me, and I'm gonna be bold and say this, that I would almost say that the moment it leapt from black and white to color was the moment I fell in love with cinema. Oh. Really was, it was such a magical moment. It had all the impact I'm sure it had on audiences back when it's it was funny, released. It's funny, isn't it? Because as a child, I just remember not buying into it. Right. So that was my sense of Judy Garland and says so she was my nan's favourite, so... I, I think I, I used to think about Judy Garland more because I thought about Liza Minnelli because I loved Liza right. Minnelli in Cabaret. Yes. Loved, loved, loved her. Yeah. And then the tragedy of her life. Mm. And so that was only the only way really I th ever thought about Judy mm. Garland, through mm. Liza. Well, this film focuses, as the play does, on her last stint towards the end of her life on stage in London. She's had all of her success. And it's based on the play that we saw, isn't it? Yeah, it's based on the play, and the play does the same thing. But she's had all of her sex. Sex? <laughs> she's had all of her success. 
She's past her prime. She's low on money. She has two young dependent children. Liza Minnelli is, is older. And she's making ends meet. And it's she, a tragic opening. It's actually. a tragic opening. Poverty stricken, dragging her kids around yeah. the theatre. Yeah, that yeah. Was, and that was the reality of it, wasn't it? Laura yeah. loved and Joey loved. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, this sense of a woman rattling around. Now, again, going back to my memories of Judith, I remember seeing footage. Obviously, she died in 1969, which was before I was born. But I remember seeing footage of Judy Garland being interviewed and her performances towards the end of her life. And I always remember thinking, God, why is she so jittery and sort of mannered? In every, she seemed so self conscious consciously mannered. Well, my mum, as we came out of the cinema today, said, well, of course, I saw her at the Palladium, you know. I said, did you? Yeah, somewhere near towards the end of her life. I said, oh, oh what was she like? She went, fat. Oh, crikey. Okay. <laughs> Which we well, didn't she never get. looked fat, though, did she? I said, well, she was probably bloated, bloated. from the alcohol, because, of course, she had an eating yes, disorder. Absolutely. It was a bit all of the way that she I mean, drinking. my other, it's weird, because Judy Garland, is, she is one of those icons that for, like, the film student, where I also then in intercepted Judy Garland, was when we studied what's called the studio system of Hollywood. And you look at the films that came out of the studio system and how the studio system defined a lot of cinema, cinematic history and what we've inherited today. You know, if you go into it, it's a very rich but, but torrid history. And of course, she's the prime example of the star who was managed, drugged, groomed, and essentially enslaved by the Hollywood system by Louis Mayer. I thought you know. that was really, really well done. The flashbacks. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. don't think we should go into too much detail on that actually because it was quite, oh God, yeah, yeah, I seem to have a memory of hearing that. Yeah. But I, I just thought it was so well done. It was done quite economically. Yes, it was. And yet it told us the whole story and broke our hearts. Yeah. And what I also liked was it was giving you some of the behind the scenes of the Yellow Brick Road. Yeah. And, and I liked that behind the scenes Yellow Brick Road. And the director, Rupert Gould, who I'm not an enormous fan of theatrically as a theatre director, I thought he managed those scenes really well. Really they well. felt theatrical, but in the right way, because of course you're on a film set, which is theatrical, isn't it? Because it's a total construct. So and I we thought... only see her as a child. All the flashbacks are in the making of that movie. Yes, yeah, you absolutely. You don't see her in anywhere, anywhere else. No, no. And you've got this publicist who's controlling her, and you've got the pills being shown, and you know, all that sort of stuff could be done very The early icky, days of icky. being not allowed to yeah. eat from 12, 13 How years did that old? make you feel? This film really surprised me with its very subtle emphasis on her food issues. Well, the young actress that played her needs mm. an award for supporting actress. She was right. utterly brilliant. Yeah. I felt rage in all the scenes, being mother of, you know, mm. of girls. I was just absolutely enraged. And there's one line when she's told by the big studio boss, mm. your mother only cares what I think about you. Mm. Mm. So she'd been totally taken away mm. from her her parents and they were in complete control of every part of her life giving her uppers and downers and starving yeah. her and i thought it placed emphasis because it's a very unglamorous thing food in terms of the story of a star and i thought there was i th for me i was really feeling the parallel between the burger that she wasn't allowed to eat by the publicist on the set of the wizard of oz or, or no in fact it was on the set of another film with uh, mickey yeah. mickey rooney uh, and then the cake at the end of the film when mm. she goes for that, that tiny amount that and she control. can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, again, although her original problem wasn't necessarily food, the studio made it food. And, yeah. and in a sense, then everything else kind of pivoted around the madness that would have well, come from that. Well, she was begging for them not to give her the pill. She wasn't yes. a natural addict. No, no, she wasn't exactly. that's that what I mean. She wasn't somebody that took to it. She wanted a big, fat, juicy burger. Yes. She wanted to sleep and Absolutely. be able to work well. I need to sleep, I need to sleep, I need to get up and learn my lines. I thought that was a really rich layer. Yeah, that I and it was about. interesting, I felt, for us knowing a lot about addiction, yeah. people being in recovery, alcoholism. And you talking about the very first time that you had a drink and going to blackout. Mm. She wasn't one of those. No. She was made an addict yes. by the studios. Yeah, yeah. And it's just tragic. Now, what am I They couldn't break her spirit, no. really, no. or her sweetness. No. And her fragility, which, going back to what I said at the beginning, I always had felt in Rennie Zellweger, and I just mm. thought. Yeah. Well, what I thought was particularly amazing, and I was just saying this in the car to my mum because she came to see it with us, was I, whenever I saw Judy Garland in interview at the later points of her life, I always thought, I can't buy you, you're so mannered. Obviously the twitches and all of that was coming from her alcoholism, her lack of food, the drugs, the uppers, the downers and all of that. Even though I, I knew that. I think also it was her rebellion. Yes. I think it, it, I think it manifested, her rebellion manifested it in the way that she absolutely, moved. Absolutely, absolutely. Because it I mean, was like, it's almost caged. 
Yes. And she's pushing out. Yes, yeah, squirming. She's squirming, squirming out of like yeah. her life. But what was amazing about Renée Zellweger's performance was that she managed to depict a manneredness that I couldn't believe in Judy Garland herself, but she depicted it so believably. Oh, I was I'm waiting. I was waiting for a chink to kick in no. where we could see behind this that no. actually this was a really, you know, it's mannered the performance. Absolute performance of her lifetime. She'll yeah. never play another role it's, like this. No. I mean, that's, just for a minute, how much did she look like her? She looked so well, that's like That's Kiki her. laughing that's upstairs, by the way. They're having a sleepover. The, she looked so, so like, like her. And the thing is, the, the camera is, 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 is very unforgiving. Close. It's relentless. So much of it, she's in major close-up. And what I love about it, you know, over the years, there's been so much chatter about mm. Rennie's face being changed with surgery. Yes, yes. Well, whatever she might have had in her face, she certainly hasn't got now. Right. And it was a moving face. It was aged in places. So but my God, it was so beautiful. It really was exquisite. She was exquisite. What is it? it was, you just fall in love with her. It was almost like she was so convincingly Judy. She was more Judy than Judy. I can only assume. Yeah, I can only assume she is a massive fan of her, and she yeah. knows it inside. Yeah. She was under the skin of Judy. It yeah. could have been Judy. You would no, not. You're absolutely right. You would not have known. You're absolutely right. Now, my my hostility always to musicals of any form, and I, you know, you know, we, you know how much I hated Bohemian Rhapsody. I found the way they shoehorn the songs in. I was kind of waiting for the eggy moment of where the hell's the music going to come in? How are they going to get the music in? And what I love about this film, a little bit like um, The Star Is Born, is that where the music happens, it happens naturally in the storytelling. So it's not yeah, like this great moment. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And so it's only that, in her show. And that was an immediate, immediate relief because for me, my big resistance to these films, I thought it was going to be a bit like, I thought we were going to go off into the Wizard of Oz land and be singing in oh, the, no, and I didn't, all that sort no, of stuff. I didn't have that. And so that, that was a huge relief. So I really liked the musical numbers. It allowed me to really listen to it. Relax, because you weren't like, oh, this yeah, is a bit cringe. Yeah, and there was an authenticity to it. And what again, what I liked about... And she sings all the songs. She, well, hang... She sings the songs, guys. Maddie Adderley, you need to check this film out for letter. Yeah. So if Rami Malik can win for miming, she will win the Oscar. She's got to be up I for a nod. I think she will win. I think she will win. So what about the? Um, there were a couple she of. She went through some shit to play that part. Yes. To feel that pain. Oh yeah. my god. She, honestly, she. When I say you know, it's banded about quite easily that she's inhabited mm. the character, she truly has. She's under the skin, she's feeling the pain, she's mm. feeling the joy, she's feeling the hope. When you see her with hope in her eyes, mm. oh my God, with her kids, with her, and her kindness, oh. Yeah, and I thought that was oh. lovely to see that in her. The phone call when she phones her kids, I don't want to spoil that for you, but just. You and know what, what, I mean. what, 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 what did you think of its portrait of her as a mother? Because I think often there's a sense or a feeling well, that she was, was a worried, neglectful mum. I was worried that it was a bit too... I would be interested to hear what our children say because we but do see uncritical. a rosy side. But mm. there is a moment... There are moments when we see that her selfishness. Like when the child says, please don't sleep, mummy, now when she's taking the pill. Because it's not one of those, it's mm. one of the other ones. No hiding that in front yeah, of the child. Yeah, yeah. So we did see the self yeah. When she goes to see Liza, and Liza says, I've got a new show, and she said, are you nervous? And yeah. she says, so we do see moments yeah. of the diva and of the bitch and of the like mm. selfish mother. But I, I suspect it was a lot worse than that. If there was a Richard Curtis moment, mm -hmm. and I say that, in a derogatory way mm. in the film. It, for me, it was the Jessie. Oh, really? I thought she was good, but it was just a little too high for me. It was just, ah. it just went over slightly into Panto, and that's me being really, really critical. But I quite like Because I thought she... she was lovely, and I thought she was good. I just think the director needed to just tone right. it down a little bit. I, th I liked her little arc at the I liked where she ended up with her character. With yeah, Judy. but for me, it was the most difficult. It was mm. underwritten. In terms of the uh, way it was shot in London, I thought it was really evocative of the of the time. I thought well, 1960s my mum said, London oh my God, really I'm real. so disappointed that I came round and I'm in the cinema. I want to be in the talk of the town. Well, she felt she was walking out of the club. 
And that's quite that's a quite tribute. Something. That's quite a tribute. And she said that, and then when we were out in the car, she said, I don't want to be coming out into Norwood. Oh. I, want to be, I want to be coming out into the talk of the town, because I thought that's what was going to happen. One can't emphasise just how close up the camera is on Rennie Zellweger's face. The director gave her, an abs and this is where I think Rennie Zellweger's performance is absolutely peerless. And I was so shocked, because I'm not a Rennie Zellweger fan, I'm not a Judy Garland fan, I'm not a fan of musicals, I'm not a fan of the music, and yet, she did every, and then, and then Rupert Gold shoving a camera in extreme ECU, extreme close-up, close. all the time this in a close. variety of scenes. I well, thought, no, even closer than that. Well, even closer than that. But I thought she did a remarkable. Well, she didn't do a job. Well, there was nowhere for her to run, nowhere for her no, to there was hide. Everything had to, hide. to be absolutely the truth for yeah. every split second she was in, and it was. I went in not expecting much and actually a bit worried that I was going to be a bit bored, bored and wondering yeah. how long it was and was I really going to care and what do I think about Renée Zellweger. I was actually absolutely gripped for every single minute of it. It was a great story. Mm -hmm. It was a great story and I was moved and I was, I, I, was, I was hurt on her behalf. I was angry. I wanted to get into there and just change the path of her life because the whole thing was just so tragic. But it was also a real story of survival. Mm. They were unable to break, they did break her spirit to a point, but they were unable to break the sweetness of her soul. And I think the sweetness, we were shown anyway in this, that the sweetness of her soul was still there. And I, I fell in love with her and I love that. Mm. The last time that happened was on, was in um, A Star Is Born, right, where I lady. fell in love. And right. when I fall yeah. in love with somebody on the screen, that yeah. really is like the old days of cinema. And I fell completely in love with her. Wow. I love the humor. There's two characters in it, oh, two gay guys, two quite camp fans of her, which, and it's such a fabulous it's a scene. Beautiful it reminded scene. me, it, it took me to the place of with Nail and I yes. did. It had that kind of feeling to it. But it wasn't too camp. It was beautifully, I thought it was one In of the, the most charming scenes. In the hands of Richard Curtis, scenes. say for oh. instance, it would have been a nightmare. Or Reese Evans would have been It was Richard Curtis esque. Yeah. But it was really, really good. Mm, it was um, yeah, she broke my heart. She lifted my spirit. She moved me. She made me cry. She gave me goosebumps. And now I'm now a mad Judy Garland fan, except I'm worried that I might be disappointed with the real Ju Judy Garland because actually I'm now probably a real Renny Zellweger fan. I think, yes, I think you're right. So what would you give it? Um, I would... It's really hard, isn't it? Because I want to say 10, but one can't because, you know, there'll be other films that come along. I think I'm going to give it... an eight and a half. Hmm. But I feel like a 10, but I can't give it a 10 because there, there are, are other things like A Star Is Born and A Favourite, and it, yeah, it's yeah. not the same as that. Right, okay. But I would absolutely recommend everyone to go and see it. Mm. Absolutely go and see it and take all the, you know, right through the generations. Like, I really want the girls to go and see mm. it. They were really adamant that they didn't want to. Um, they thought it looked naff, and that, 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 that's yeah. the trailer that they Yeah, and it that. does look naff from the trailer, yeah. so don't judge it by the trailer. Okay, well I would, as I've just said, I wasn't a fan of any of the elements going into this. This was a duty rather than a joy. Um, and I have to say, I think it's really yeah, interesting. Yeah, we literally went because we had to review it. Yeah, for absolutely. Channel. That's why we went. It's really, and it, but it's really interesting for me that in the same weekend in the UK, the Joker has been released and Judy has been released. And I do think, not that the Oscars count for anything really, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? It's a bit frippery. But I do think we've witnessed the two performances that are more than likely going to win Best Actor and Best Actress. Um, well, if, if, if he doesn't win Best Actor, I, I can't be held responsible well, to what's going to happen to... Maddie you don't want to be in this household. You're going to have to tune into our Oscar coverage, I, mean, I tell oh you. Oh my God, Oscar night will be disastrous if he doesn't win. I thought this was a beautiful character portrait as you say, of a, of a personality we all feel we know, we all feel we've got. I feel like Rennie Zellweger managed to, in her performance, do what HD used to do for the average image. She's given us an HD Judy Garland we never mm. got in Judy Garland herself, ever. Mm. And I feel like this is an absolute indulgence. So I'm really curious to know how and if, for those people who are enormous Judy Garland fans, if this doesn't deliver, I'd be fascinated to know where it hasn't delivered. Oh, yeah, you see, this friend of mine who is yeah. a Judy Garland fan, I suppose if you 
If you have been a completely adoring fan all your life, you're going to be looking for exactly Judy, yes, aren't you? Yeah. If there's one criticism I could have of it, have of it, it could be that it's a bit of a hagiography. It 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 it, it really she steps does. back from being too hypercritical, and I'm sure she was much more of a. Even where she's a madam, it's sort of like oh, she's a madam type thing. Yeah. Um, and she, you know, she was a madam, and she was difficult, and she was all these but things. She's an addict. She would yeah, have been exactly, a fucking nightmare exactly. for everyone she came up against. Absolutely. But I, <laughs> I, I thought it was an absolutely revelatory performance by by Renny Zellweger. I full of admiration and just superlatives coming out of me everywhere and I hope, hope that her and, and, and whacking Phoenix run away with the award. So I'd give it, but funnily enough, I'd give it exactly the same. I'd give it 8.5. There you go. There you go. Go see it then. Go see it. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.